You know, that's exactly, go ahead and clap. Amen. That's exactly how the shepherds must have felt. Sit down and give me five minutes. Seven, maybe eight. Can you imagine hearing that for the very first time? Being out in the field, just doing your job, you know, you're sitting in front of a computer terminal and, and all of a sudden an angel appears to you and you go, basically, oh my God, that's, all, that's really all you could do. Because if something like that were to happen, who else would be responsible for it? And so the shepherds are out tending their field and all of a sudden an angel comes down and he, he's, got, he's got news for him and I'm going to read it to you really quickly this morning. In the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. But the, and an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terribly frightened, literally shaking in their moccasins or whatever they had. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, there has been born for you a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. And when the angel had, angels had gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. So they came in a hurry and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which they were told by the shepherds. But Mary treasured all these things and pondering them in her heart. The shepherds then went back, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen just as it had been told to them. What an exciting period in, in life when God first revealed, I'm here. Oh, you're not excited. I'm sorry for that. The shepherds were afraid initially. And the angel had to, had to tell him, he said, don't be afraid. Man, this is good news. And with that good news comes a, a, a season of joy, comes an attitude of joy, comes a, a, a realization that something's happening. God's shaking up the world. Say amen, someone. Amen. amen. God is shaking up the world. Now, I bet you, I bet you the world wasn't ready for it. The shepherds weren't ready for it, but it didn't take but just a few minutes of, of the angels praising God for them to go, wow, something needs to change. We were terrified, we were frightened, we were terribly frightened. But now things are, you know, things are just a little bit better. We're a little more chill and, you know, we just kind of, you know, meandering along. Why don't we change the direction in which we've been going? Why don't we stop what we're doing right here and right now? And why don't we go find out if what these angels have said and what this angel has said, let's see if it's really true. Because, you know, the truth is, is that if you don't believe it and you don't buy into it, then it really has, doesn't matter to you. It will matter to you, but it probably doesn't matter to you unless you're willing to change the direction in which you're headed. So the shepherds were just out doing their deal, just tending sheep. Stinky, horrible job. You know? Anybody like mutton? See, we don't even like mutton. But they were just doing their deal. But they had a little change. I, I think God, God wants four things from us that we see in the scripture really, really quickly. He wants us to change our attitude. See, the shepherds could have said, no, my job is to tend the sheep. God, you do your thing, but I'm going to do mine. Have we ever had that attitude? Or do we know somebody that, that has that attitude? You know, God, I know you've got something awesome in store for them, but it doesn't really probably apply to me. So, so I'm just going to keep doing what I've been doing. 
And you know what insanity is, right? Keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting some different results. And so God expects change in the way we do things, in the direction that we're heading. And the shepherds made the right change. They left the fields and they went towards God. Isn't that what we need to do too? I mean, it's real simple. I'm out doing my own thing and God says, hello, Ray. Yes, God. And all of a sudden, he's got my attention. It's real simple. You know, when you read the word of God, when you sing the word of God, when you sing scriptures, when you sing spiritual songs, that is literally attractive to God. And so he wants us to turn our attention, turn our direction to him. Then he kind of wants us to change our understanding. You know, the shepherds initially were, were very terrified, terribly frightened. But once they heard the good news, that fear really turned to joy and to awe and to wonder. Wow, is this really God? And what if we were to, to change our direction and change our attitude and go, you know, God, you really are worth it. Christ was worth it. I know life is a struggle for most of us. But life is a struggle for most of us. That's life. But God said, in Christ, you can find joy. You can find a reason for, for rejoicing, a reason for singing, a reason for living life. And so when we change our direction and we change our attitude, then all of a sudden, we're actually going to the God who came down to earth for us. And he gives us a reason for living. He gives us a reason for going out and tending the sheep or going and sitting in front of a computer uh, monitor or, or, you know, a scalpel because you're a surgeon or a tooth because you're a dentist or, you know, you're a, a fracker, so you go do what fracking people do, you know, and you just go do what you're supposed to do. And yet you've connected with the God who offers you life eternal and everything is different. You know, you can be a joyful person who's drilling someone's teeth without being crazy <laughs> or shoveling snow or sitting in front of a computer monitor. God gives us that joy. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas. It said God came and he literally changed everything. And so our understanding begins to change. That life isn't just about my job. And it's not just about my family. It's not just about my community. It's about a God who loves me enough to visit me. To visit my world and then live in my world with a complete understanding of what each and every one of us is going through. How awesome is that? Because God literally could sit on his throne and go, no, you guys just do what I tell you to do. I'm, I'm not going to engage you. You're just going to have to believe that I'm up there. But he didn't do that. Christ came as the only son of God, holy God, holy man, to live a life that is completely acceptable to God. And he said, follow my pattern. Follow my ways. So change your direction. Change your understanding. Change your attitude. We, we get to do that. Uh, have you ever changed your attitude from being cruddy to being happy? Raise your hand if you've ever done that. Okay, now if you didn't raise your hand, you need to learn. <laughs> because we can't go around as Christians having horrible, horrible attitudes. Look at verse 17. Uh, you probably don't have your Bible, so I'll just read it. When they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been known, had been told them about this child. Their values changed. Let me tell you about this little sheep over here. It's just as cute as a little thing is what they talked about before. Boy, I'm so tired. We've been up here for three or four weeks, and my feet hurt, and I'm tired, and I'm tired of sleeping on the stones. And all of a sudden, they, they hear about God. They meet Jesus, the baby, and all of a sudden, they're talking about Christ. They're talking about God. Their values begin to change because, you know, they had their whole life invested on that mountainside in those sheep. And all of a sudden, they found something much more valuable than what they had valued before because they found Christ. That's what Christmas is about. It's finding value, finding life in the God who loves us and the God who created us and the God who offers salvation to each and every one of us. I'm going to ask you if you'll stand this morning. All right, I was about eight minutes. Sorry, I went over. It could have been 40. Actually, going to, no. No. <laughs> 
I want you to bow your heads or quiet your heart. You don't have to bow your heads if you don't want to, but quiet your hearts and just listen to me for just a minute. Gracious Heavenly Father, I stand before you this morning, Lord, and, and I, I pray for these people. I pray for myself, God, that we would not be so wrapped up in the commercialism that has become modern-day Christmas, that we would celebrate the season of joy, the season of giving, the season of, of even suffering because of what you've done for us. Because you did come and pay the earth a visit. And the earth wasn't ready for it. The world wasn't ready for God to come. And yet you came anyway and you changed everything because of your deep love for each and every one of us. So I pray this morning, God, that we would, we would change our direction. We would change our attitude. We would change our understanding. But even more than that, that we would change our value system that we would value a relationship with you and obedience to you above all else, that we would truly be your humble servants, living life as you've given us life and taking it into our, the classrooms if we're, we're students or taking it to work wherever we go or taking, taking it into our homes, that there is value in Christ. And he's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. And so, Lord, I pray for us this morning that in every word, every thought, and every deed, we would be a blessing to you, that we would glorify you, that we would honor you, and that we would be so submitted and committed to you that we would talk about you, that we would let people who have no hope know that there is hope in Christ, and that we begin living or continue living as people who have the greatest hope the world could ever know that Jesus saves and that there's life in Christ. So, Father, be with us as we get ready to go home this morning. Lord, I pray that, that we would, we just have our, our eyes on you for the rest of this week and come back Saturday night and come back Sunday, Sunday morning, even though it's Sunday's Christmas morning. But, Lord, Christmas is about Christ. So, Father, Please compel us to give an hour to worship you, an hour to give you the due that you're really due. Father, we love you. Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. I pray that we would honor you in every way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.